Travelling Carnival is an amusement show that is made up of rides, food vendors, merchandise retailers, and games of chance and skill. But before you could win giant-sized stuffed teddy bears, visitors would be offered a chance to win something a little less family-friendly. This week on Wheel of Attractions, we're taking a look at the history of the Travelling Carnival. Whenever I mention the World's Fair among friends in themed entertainment, everybody almost immediately thinks of Walt Disney's appearance at the New York World's Fair in 1964. During this fair, he presented his attractions featuring a new, innovative form of animation. This new technology was so advanced, a special name had to be developed for it. Ah, ah, ooh, ah, 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 audio animatronics? Right, audio animatronics. Oh. Audio for sound. See, si, and electronically animated by sound. That's, That's what he's trying to say. Thank you. That's what I was trying to say. Guests were amazed, and it really showed how far location-based entertainment had advanced over the years. But long before Walt Disney made his debut, people visiting the fair in 1893 would get a glimpse into a new form of entertainment and how the travelling carnival would soon take over the old-style pleasure gardens as a way to bring their show to the hometowns across America. In 1893, the Chicago World's Columbian Exposition also called the Chicago World's Fair, was the catalyst for the development of the Travelling Carnival. At the fair was an avenue at the edge of the grounds called the Midway Pleiance. This avenue of the fair had games of chance, burlesque shows, so-called freak shows, and Wild West shows, including the famous Buffalo Bills, whose show was set up near the fairground. It also featured the original Ferris wheel constructed by George Washington Gale Ferris Jr. Following the Chicago World's Fair, the term Midway was adopted from the Midway Pleiance to denote an area at county and state fairs where sideshow entertainment was located. After the Chicago World's Columbian Exposition, traveling carnival companies began touring all over the United States. Due to the type of acts featured, along with the sometimes dishonest business practices of the operators, the travelling carnivals were often looked down upon. In 1868, Frederick Savage, an agricultural engineer, devised a method of driving rides by steam. His invention, a steam engine mounted in the centre of the ride, transformed the fairground industry in England and around the world. As the preeminent carousel maker in the 19th century, his fairground machinery was exported globally. Otto Schmidt, a showman at the World's Fair, formed Chicago Midway Pleiance Amusement Company. The company featured 13 acts, including some from the World's Fair, and began a tour of the Northeast United States. Many different acts became common at the carnival. Human acts included people with multiple arms or legs, extremely tall people, obese people, people born with facial or other deformities, and tattooed people. The term used for this type of show was called a freak show. There were also animal shows. Oddities such as the two-headed calf and the miniature horse were featured in the freak show as well. Of course, the changing of public opinion and increased medical knowledge led to the decline of these type of shows. Another type of act at the sideshow was the thrill act. Examples of these acts included the fire eaters, sword swallowers, the human blockhead, the human pincushion, and knife throwers. Some of these types of shows, such as the human fountain, were later found to be fakes. Daredevil shows like the Globe of Death, which featured motorcycles performing inside an enclosed sphere, or a high diving act was sometimes included. And of course, there were also games at the carnival. As operators became more sophisticated throughout the years, their games became more standardised. This partly reflected the need to provide familiarity to carnival goers and partly to standardise the manufacturing, logistics and management. One popular game which can still be found at carnivals today is the balloon darts, where the participant tries to pop a water balloon with a dart. Other games put participants in competition with one another by shooting targets with water to propel cars across a finish line. Most games were honest, but carnival operators could easily manipulate them. 
Now, when a visitor would win one of these games of chance, they would not be awarded with a stuffed teddy bear like we see today. Instead, they would be offered a bottle of whiskey or even a cigar. As is expected with carnival games, there were some wins, but most people lost. And with every loss, the carnival barker would shout a popular phrase that we all know today. Nice try, but no cigar. The appeal of this new type of entertainment was embraced. In 1902, there were 17 travelling carnivals in the US. The number grew to 46 in 1905, and by 1937, there were an estimated 300 carnivals touring the country. To sum up the excitement the average carnival goer felt as they walked among the lights and smelled the delicious food, it was once said, the carnivals conjure up a host of associations in American culture. Heirs to both the showmanship of Wild Bill Hickok and the entertaining mendacity of the snake oil salesman, carnivals tap deeply into the American psyche. Its relentlessness, its love-hate relationship with conformity, its romance with all things criminal. The carnival was a non-judgmental environment where the deformed, the drifter, the loser could find a place that would accept him unconditionally. It was a metaphor for freedom from troubles, from the mundane, and into a magical world where the rule is that things aren't always what they seem. If you enjoyed this video, remember to give a thumbs up and leave a comment. If you're at all interested in hearing about the history of themed entertainment, as well as other stories from your favourite attractions, please hit that subscribe button. We'd appreciate having you. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time on We Love Attractions.